Hi everyone, let's take a look at the integral from 0 to infinity of the natural log of x over 1 plus x squared with respect to x, and we are going to use two separate substitutions to show that this integral is in fact 0. So let's make a start. Our first substitution is going to be that we're going to let x be equal to u to the minus 1, or 1 over u, as u is going to be our new integration variable. So if x is u to the minus 1, um, what is dx in terms of du? Well, we just differentiate both sides, um, and we end up finding that dx is equal to minus u to the minus 2 du. Okay, so let's do the substitution. Um, so our integral, which I've defined as i, is going to be, let's think about the limits um, in a second once we've dealt with the integrand. So we're going to get the natural log of um, x, which is u to the minus 1 now, and the bottom is going to be 1 plus u to the minus 2. Uh, dx we can just write as minus u to the minus 2 du, as we showed above. Now, how about the limits? Well, as x tends towards 0, um, 1 over x, like u is 1 over x, right? So as x tends towards 0, 1 over x tends towards infinity, so our lower limit is in fact going to be infinity. And similarly, as x tends towards infinity, 1 over x tends towards 0, and so the upper limit becomes 0. So notice it's the same as what we started with, but it's kind of um, flipped upside down. So let's go into the next line. On the next line, what I'm going to do is um, flip the limits of integration around, so change them from 0 to infinity, and put a minus sign in front. Right? We can do that. Flip the limits uh, and put a minus sign in front, and uh, let's manipulate the integrand a bit. So log of u to the minus 1, we can use our laws of logs to say that's the same as minus the natural log of u. And, um, okay, then we've got this uh, u to the minus 2 over here, but we also have a u to the minus 2 here. So what I'm going to do is divide the top and the bottom of our integrand by u to the minus 2, and then if we divide 1 by u to the minus 2, it becomes u squared, right? And this u to the minus 2 on the denominator will just become 1. Then this one over here has disappeared because we've divided by it, and so we just left with a minus du. But then we have two minus signs in the integrand, one here, one here. They cancel each other out and make a plus. Notice that what we've got now is the same as what we started with, but with u's instead of x's. But that doesn't matter. It's still the same thing because it's just a, a dummy variable, right? We're integrating over it. What we have is because of this minus sign in front of this whole expression, we have found that i is equal to minus i. Okay. Now we can rearrange this to get 2i equals uh, 0, and therefore i itself is also 0. So i is 0, we've shown that our integral value is 0. So that's one way to do it, and there's actually another substitution that we can use. Let's have a look at what that is. What we can do is set x to be e to the v. So I'm using v instead of u to show that this is a, a different variable. Now if we differentiate both sides of this, we get uh, dx is e to the v dv. So let's do our substitution. i is going to be, again, let's think about the limits after we've dealt with the integrand itself. So ln x, by definition of x, is just going to be v, right? And 1 plus x squared is going to be 1 plus e to the 2v. If we square e to the v, we get e to the 2v. And dx, um, we are going to write e to the v dv. How about the limits? Well, uh, if we want x to be 0, then we're asking what power do we have to raise e to to get um, to get 0. So that technically can never happen, but as v tends towards minus infinity, then x tends towards 0. So our lower limit is going to be minus infinity, and uh, well, our upper limit is still going to be infinity, right? Because as x tends towards infinity, uh, the natural log of x also tends towards infinity. Um, so that limit stays as it is. Uh, and so, let's just um, just have to do one more thing with this, actually. Integral from minus infinity to infinity of uh, v. We're going to divide the top and the bottom of our integrand by e to the v this time. So this e to the v is going to disappear, right? And we're just going to get a dv there. Um, then if we divide 1, this 1 by e to the v, we get e to the minus v. If we divide e to the 2v by e to the v, we get e to the v. Now, uh, we're going to use a symmetry argument. Notice that... Um, the integrand, in other words, v over e to the minus v plus e to the v, 
is an odd function. In other words, if we exchange v with minus v, um, we, get back the same, we get back the same thing but with a minus sign, and if we integrate an odd function over a symmetrical region uh, or over all of space as we're doing here, then we get zero because essentially the positive area on one side cancels the negative area on the other side, um, thinking of the integral as the area under a curve. And so we're integrating an odd function over all possible values of v, and therefore we get zero. So there you go, two ways to um, understand why this integral ends up being zero.